Hey guys, Boris Hasselberg. Welcome to the crosses section from March 13th to March 17th, 2017. And the crosses, of course, remain in this very, very um, no man's land for most of the time. There are a couple of very, very clear trends, but they're rare. We'll talk about one of them. We picked them last week, and I think there's still continuation to, uh, to go on in that one. Uh, but for the rest of the stuff, they were sort of in this very tight volatility range for most of the crosses. And that's why I find them so interesting, because the break one way or the other could really be a signal towards a directional move. Let's take a look at the charts that I have this week that I think are interesting. The Euro Kiwi from last week was just a blowout number, I mean a blowout uh, chart, and uh, it continues to be a very, very strong move. However, we are approaching a very key resistance at the 155 level, so very much worth watching that. For those of you who like to punt and just maybe take a uh, gander on a, on a short-term sell-off, this this 155 could potentially be an interesting um, uh, short, quite you know, short scalped sale basically. Long term though, this looks very strong as a big breakout, and you basically just want to be buying pullbacks on any kind of a move on the Euro Kiwi move. Uh, the pound Aussie is a trade as much. Um, on pound weakness as anything else. If we do see further pound weakness, certainly the support at 160 could, could go, and that's a big, big area to break. If that uh, comes down to the, uh, to, to the downside, uh, it creates much more scope for move towards the 158s as we go for the rest of the week. Uh, the last one is this volatility compression trade in the crosses that I've been talking about. This odd yen is really uh, caught between a rock and a hard place. And it's quite interesting, though, here, if we, I think, if the yen finally breaks out to the upside, if dollar yen finally breaks out to the upside, I don't see the, the Aussie really coming in the, uh, that much. And I think the yen crosses, including the Aussie yen, are going to benefit this 187 to the upside, probably going to be a very good breakout zone. Conversely, if we have a failure of um, the failure to launch, as they say in the movies, if we have a failure to launch uh, in terms of this 115 level on the dollar yen, this Aussie yen crash through the 8550s could really take it much further down. So it'll be interesting to watch because I think. Even a collapse, you know, uh, even if U.S. raises rates and you get a collapse in, on the yen side, you'll still get a, a downward drift in the Aussie, and that will probably uh, complement or, or uh, enhance, exacerbate the move to the downside in the Aussie, uh, in the Aussie yen. Let's take a look at the uh, crosses uh, from the beginning. Let's just take a look at the Euro Kiwi first and see how the very powerful, very powerful breakout move that, of course, we saw this week. It's actually been how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, Kathy has an interesting rule. It's, um, it's a kind of a statistical rule that she's done a lot of work on, where if you have anywhere more than seven days of up, up moves, the probability becomes almost like 85 to 90 percent that you're going to have some pullback off of those. In other words, you're going to have a red day. It's very, very rare in the currency markets to have sort of more than seven green days or more than seven red days in a row. They certainly can have it. They're, they're big outliers. But the point being is that we have like now a nine days of up moves against against a pretty decent resist area here in this 156. So I think laying out laying out scale up shorts, that is, you know, 54, 55 to 56 with a, with a, with a stop at 57. Uh, quite possible as an interesting um, as an interesting fade trade, but you have to be small and you have to be very tactical. And and, and, and I think the comeback here will be very quick, maybe to 52s, and that's about it on the uh, on the Euro Kiwi. Technically and fundamentally, it's still very much a buy trade, so it's really taking a big risk to try to want to fade it. But statistically, it looks like a pretty decent fade here at these levels. Um, the pound odd, on the other hand. Um, it's really going to be a trade on uh, on the pound weakness. Now, 160 has held quite a lot, so you're sort of selling into this 160 support. But if that support can break, the break here really takes us very quickly down to the 158s. It's going to be very interesting to see. Conversely, a breakout above, I certainly wouldn't want to be long this thing, but if I see a breakout above 162.50, completely different story, and you certainly you, you, you clearly want to reposition yourself because it means something has happened in the pound where the market has, has, has changed its mind, willing to take it up higher, the short squeeze comes into play and the short squeeze can easily go towards the 164s before it kind of dies out. So I, I don't want to be long pound unless I see 62.50, but if I do, I definitely do want to change my mind on that. Last but not least, here's the odd yen, which is the uh, the compression story that we've seen. Look at this volatility compression. We're essentially moving in, in about a 150 point range for three months, nothing going on here. But again, um, the critical thing here is the failure. If the yen fails at the 115, the breakdown to the downside could easily take us right below this 85 level and take us all the way down towards the 84s very quickly. So odd yen to the downside 
um, could be a potential here on a failure. The upside trade here, if the yen does break out, takes us possibly all the way out to 88 uh, on an Aussie yen uh, uh, trend move. So that's how the week shapes up. Wish you guys the best luck, the best of trading. Boris Lasberg, over and out.